the sounds of construction in Somalia's capital, Mogadishu, reverberate across the city. Cranes dot its skyline. If you look anywhere in the city, you'll see new modern multi-story buildings. This is what has been replacing bullet-scarred houses after decades of war. We have three floors parking and the rest. Abdi Rizak Ali Warsame is building the tallest apartment block in the city. He says most of the units were sold even before they came into the open market. Thousands of people now, engineers, doctors, are working and coming to work for Somalia. So all of those people need this uh, demand. This. And, uh, and imagine uh, uh, the city is expanding. I can call now Mogadishu one of the fastest cities uh, in terms of growing, in terms of population. Shakur Shidane runs a restaurant. He returned from the UK in 2019 to a country he left when he was five years old. He says life here is not easy, but moving back was worth the risk. The amount that it cost me to live in Salzburg, one of the most expensive cities in Europe, and what it does to live in Mogadishu is very much similar. I'm paying nearly $800 for a two-bedroom apartment, and the internet is an issue, electricity, and costs are quite high. Um, in, but at the same time, I think it's different um, financial lanes for different outputs come out. Thousands of diaspora Somalis, like Shidane, are increasingly making their way home. They say they want to see their city stand on its legs again. This year we have allocated 3,000 teachers in the national budget and will continue to recruit more teachers in the coming years until we get free education for our children. Most of the education institutions in Somalia are currently run by the private sector. But with introduction of a new curriculum in 2018, the sector is gradually returning to government management. Let's start by remembering why our troops went into Somalia in the first place. We went because only the United States could help stop one of the great human tragedies of this time. A third of a million people had died of starvation and disease. Twice that many more were at risk of dying. Meanwhile, tons of relief supplies piled up in the capital of Mogadishu because a small number of Somalis stopped food from reaching their own countrymen. Our consciences said, enough. In our nation's best tradition, we took action with bipartisan support. President Bush sent in 28,000 American troops as part of a United Nations humanitarian mission. Our troops created a secure environment so that food and medicine could get through. We saved close to one million lives. And throughout most of Somalia, everywhere but in Mogadishu, life began returning to normal. Crops are growing, markets are reopening, so are schools and hospitals. Nearly a million Somalis still depend completely on relief.